You're on. Go. Go ahead, Rusty. Okay, I'm just getting it together here. Can you see the screen? Yep. Hi, I'm Rusty Dworkin, and I'm excited to be here tonight to talk about a different approach to a job search. And if you've been in sales or marketing, probably this is familiar to you. And if you haven't, then you're about to learn something interesting going on a sales journey. I do this as part of a workshop. So this is an abbreviated version. If you want more, I'm happy to provide it. Let's look at the typical job search process that we're all accustomed to. You find the uh, job posting, you fire off your resume in a cover letter, then you wait, then you pray, then the hiring folks get together and they decide what they want. And you realize there are 400 applicants for every job. That's the national average, by the way. I saw one LinkedIn job opening that had almost 700. But in this case, 499 applicants applied. They hired one, 399 failed. But that's the typical process. And here's some truths. You're great at what you do, but you've not been taught skills to manage, a, to manage a job search campaign in today's competitive uh, market. Outplacement firms and other networking groups, they teach you how to strategize, but they don't give you very many tools. So what do I do at eight o'clock on Monday morning after the week after I've been laid off? What do I do with my day? How do I manage this thing? Hiring cycles are pretty much hit and miss. When you have to accept that job searches comprise end-to-end -end processes that you can and must understand and can learn to execute uh, within more efficiently, more effectively. These job processes, these search processes have to operate within a hiring process. Know that as good as your resume is, it's not going to speak for you because it'll be among the sea of paper that hiring managers uh, receive every day. You can learn how to identify, develop, and close opportunities by applying strategies and tactics of the most successful salespeople to accelerate your back-to-work cycle. And finally, the rules of job search and hiring are not set up to help seekers. They're designed to help busy managers screen out hundreds of applicants quickly. I've been on both sides. I've been laid off twice. I resigned once and I've hired hundreds of people. And I can tell you that that is the goal. The goal is how do I get through a hundred or 200 or 400 resumes to find something that looks useful. The big truth is searching for a job is in most respects a sales campaign. The only difference is you're the product. So let's look at the linkages between a sales campaign and a job search campaign. Sales, it's a systematic process. And I'm talking about it from the perspective of the person who's doing the selling. And the job search is a systematic process. And I should say probably the hiring search, it's a systematic process. And the sales world is generally executed by highly trained sales professionals who know how to target the right person and get the business. But in a job search, it's generally executed by highly skilled job applicants but who know next to nothing of a sales process. In sales, the goal of the process is a sale. 
In a job search, the goal of the process is a great position that satisfies your why. And that's a pretty important distinction um, because the point of it is satisfying your why. So what do salespeople do? Whoops. I'm sorry, this drop down keeps. What salespeople do that you must emulate? Number one, they understand that sales is a process. They know their product intimately. They know the market well. They're willing to do the hard work, operating out of their comfort zone most of the time. And finally, they seek to understand the customer's needs. And wrapped around all of that is the fundamental goal of relationships, of building relationships. Because nobody's going to listen to anybody that they don't know. With the job search, there's really two approaches. The first one is we wait for opportunities. We look for job ads, we look for postings, and then we apply. And LinkedIn even makes it easy. You can just hit the easy, well, I think they call it the easy apply button. On the pro side, it's easy, effortless, and pays off about 2% of the time. But it avoids a lot of hard work. Conversely, it fails 98% of the time. And then there are those who work hard to make the opportunity. It pays off 98% of the time. Conversely, it requires new skills. It's a lot of hard work and you're operating out of your comfort zone almost all the time. So let's look at the hiring process as sort of from a 30,000 foot view. There's some event, somebody wakes up one day and says, it would be great if I had somebody who could X. And they think about that some more and they define a need. And they start looking for potentials at this point. And at the same time, they're balling up all their requirements and their needs into a posting. And they're going to collect resumes. They're going to interview the best few. And then they're going to hire someone. And you're going to get in about here. Waiting for the opportunity so they can collect your resume. Positioning from the beginning is a different story. And this is really where operating outside the comfort zone happens because you're gonna start building relationships, hopefully early in the process. Then there's a cataclysmic event, some need, and you will be already talking to people in that company. Why? Because you targeted that company, you identified people that would be good connections, you did the hard work of the cold emails, which I don't particularly recommend. I recommend referrals and phone calls. But you're gonna start building relationships. While they're figuring out their needs, you're talking to them. They've seen your background, they've seen your resume. They may even had a referral, you may have had a referral call them. And when I say they're canvassing for potentials, they haven't posted a position. They're canvassing to see who they might know, who their friends might know, who, you know, Johnny at the water cooler knows. And they get all of that together and they, and they get it through the requisition process and to where they're able to post a position. And here they post the position. This is a long time. Once they post that position, then they start collecting resumes. Now remember, you're here and you're talking to people throughout this process. The other folks get in here. Then they interview the best few and you're 
now positioning, you're finding out your position. You're trying to understand if there are any concerns about you and you're going back to, you know, all through this process to get feedback on your candidacy. And your odds then of being number one, one of the best few, and number two, being the one they hire is significantly higher. It's, it's, um, it all begins with relationship and carrying that relationship through as many contacts as possible through the hiring process. It starts out with a well thought goal and a clear personal value proposition. The key thing is you're gonna draw up a list of target companies you think you'd like to work for. And for each company, you're gonna have a goal and you're gonna have a personal value proposition. And the way it looks when you're constructing it is very specific. What is my goal? I want to attain a position as EVP of global manufacturing. It amazing results. By August the 31st, key contacts will speak to my turnaround uh, experience. Why are they hiring? Because a change in management requires new leadership. And here's the, here's the big one. What is your personal value proposition? And why you? What is your knowledge, education skills, training, et cetera? What is your EQ, self-awareness, empath, compassion, toughness, technical expertise, demonstrable direct experience? When we talk about a personal, proposi personal value proposition, we're talking about what are the attributes and qualities that make your candidacy important and I'm going to bring a document up and you're welcome to have this I didn't create this this was created by somebody else but in a nutshell essentially it is why should I buy this particular product said another way why should I hire you and your value proposition must answer it in a compelling way. The trick is to know yourself well. Know how you compare with your peers, and more importantly, put yourself in your customer's shoes. It can be created step by step by answering a series of questions. This is really tough work. I won't understate it. I've done it a few times and it's, and, it's, and it's very hard. Number one is know your customer. So I've decided that Amazing Results is the company I wanna to go to work for. And the CEO is the person who's gonna hire me. So who, are, who is that person? What does she do and what does she need? What problems does she need to solve? Improvements does she look for? What does she value? The good news is, if you're making the right connections, somebody's going to be able to advise you. When you pick up that phone, you're not looking for a job. You're simply looking for advice. Know yourself. Know how your background, your skills and experience satisfy those needs. And what hard results will it offer the customer? Know your peers. And then finally distill the customer oriented proposition. Put it all together. I wanna buy this, I wanna hire this person because the things I value most about this are So let's say you sell lawnmowers as an example. 
your customer is somebody with a large backyard. It's a business person with a large house who likes the meditative feeling of cutting their lawn, but gets bored by the job when it takes too long, like all of us. Looking for a good quality of cut for the job to be done quickly and enjoyably. The product is a ride-on mower with a 25 horsepower engine, 45 inch cutting blades. The mower goes faster and cuts wider than the competition. Our mower cuts your grass in 50% of the time of the big brand mowers in, the, in its class, and it leaves the lawn looking great too. So you're offering them numbers, you're quantifying the value, and satisfying their and how it satisfies their need. So all right. So how do we execute a campaign? And again, what do I do on Monday morning? It it's it's critical for a couple things to happen. One is stop, realize that you now have a new job. And that job is to find your next best great opportunity that satisfies your why. And what I recommend is identify seven to 10 companies in your area, research those companies, Look at all the job listings to see how to approach skills, but don't apply. Then, five, then find five people you do not know at each company who look like they could connect you to others and connect with them. And in your connection, all you're gonna say is, I'm interested in working for amazing results and I just really would like some advice Amazing results looks like a great company that could really use somebody with my talents. And the point is people are willing to help. Anybody will give you advice, but if you ask for a job, you're, gonna, you're, you're not gonna get very far. They'll say, well, I don't know of any openings, sorry. As opposed to giving you really good um, help. Referrals is, is, is a great um, topic. First of all, it's not who you know, it's who knows you and who knows what you can do and is willing to speak for you. The best referral is an internal referral in the company you wanna look for, that you wanna work for. And that referral can speak to your specific skills and values. Most importantly, always ensure that referrals, references, know the position and the values that you wanna highlight. Be clear with them, what you're looking, position you're looking for, the values, the skills, so they can speak to those. And always follow up with a referral. If it's an internal reference, it's great because that person can be a coach. That person can help you understand when the hiring process is stopped, slowed down, you know, has, has some sort of a red flag. But that's how to work with referrals and references. And by the way, if you're gonna be a reference for somebody else, make sure that you understand this as well. So let's look at the hirer's process. And here's a typical response. No contact, no awareness until the position's posted. And you have no positioning and process. You have no relationships. You've really not done much to get a job at that company. But they post a position that you see. They collect the resumes. They interview the best few. And you may even be one of the best few. But the likelihood you'll be hired is nil because the person they've been talking to back here is the one that's most likely going to uh, get that job. Proactive relationship. This is being formed 
even before this person has the idea they want to hire somebody. This is ideal. Chances are you're probably going to get in here when that person's thinking about their needs. They haven't necessarily put forward the job rec yet, hadn't been approved, but they're thinking about their needs. This is an ideal time to get in front of them. When they're canvassing for potentials, they're going to think of you because you're going to call them. Hey, how are you doing with that? Just curious if you've, if you've gotten any further with a job rec. Then they're going to post that position. Where are you? They've already gotten your resume. They've had two conversations with you. They understand you. They're favorable to you. They post that position and here come the slew of resumes. And you're continuing to follow up with them. Hey, I know you got a bunch of resumes. How's mine looking? Your positioning. Interview the best few. You're going to be in that best few. You stand a very good chance of being hired at that point. So to get back to work more quickly, a sales mentality is critical. Know the goal that you have for each company you target. Target several companies. Get LinkedIn connections into each of those companies that can help you achieve that goal. Clarify your personal value proposition for each goal. Why would you be great for that particular job? Then craft proactive campaigns to connect and talk with decision makers using LinkedIn and, re and referrals. One thing I've started thinking about and encouraging people to do is to put use cases on your LinkedIn site. Examples. Give me an example when you've saved your company money. Give me an example when you've optimized the process. You can actually put a whole use case together and speak to you and speak to it very well. Then continue to stay connected. Share ideas and make it clear that it's the relationship that's important. You might get invited to, to work on a special project or to talk about newly emerging opportunities. Again, it's the relationship that's of most importance. And that's the, um, that's the presentation. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Uh, Rusty, I'm very interested in this. Because, to be honest, I'm not looking for a job, but I am interested in, in persuading people to join FJMC, uh, give money to FJMC. A lot of the things that you're talking about, I assume, are processes that I could use in that regard, correct? I think the, um, I, I think one thing, yes. I, I mean, it certainly can. I think, especially for service organizations, um, where we may not be accustomed to selling, it, it, taking that hard look at yourself, what is, what is that value proposition? What is it that we offer? And, and not just, you know, you can be a member of a club or that, that's not going to, you know, that'll satisfy some people to figure out what it is that you really bring and what you really offer clubs to drive membership. So it comes down to knowing your why, as you had said earlier, correct? 100%. And, and secondly, I would say it's relationship. You know, I don't know that the average club has any, has any knowledge particularly about the mission of the FJMC and why it's important. And, and I think 
because there's not been much of a relationship um, building process. But I mean, I don't know that completely firsthand, um, but I do know um, I've experienced that. Let me get back to your original point about building a relationship with someone I, if hypothetically I did want a job and I'm zeroing in on the XYZ corporation. So I want to call up that person, you mentioned the CEO or, you know, a senior vice president. Why would they even take my call? You know, the, the, that question is really, really important. And it's, um, I think the reason that they would take that call is because they know something about you. It, it's, it's very, very hard to just pick up the phone and call a senior VP, get their admin and say, I'd like 15 minutes with, you know, John Smith. And they'll go, well, what it's about? Well, it's about how to, you know, whatever. You know, the, the, the likelihood that that meeting is gonna come about is pretty low. Right. But if you know somebody who knows that guy, okay, and you say, look, I'd like a discussion with John Smith. I think they got a need and I'd like to talk to him about it, but I don't know him. Would you possibly be willing to be a reference or a referral? And then I can call back and say to the admin, well, Charles thought it would be a good, good idea if I, uh, you know, if I spoke with John about some ideas I have in, in uh, manufacturing efficiency. That's going to get a call back. Okay. You know, and then you can do the sales guy's fork, which is, you know, a Tuesday afternoon or Thursday morning be better for you. What's and, that? What's all of that about? Well, if you just say, you know, what's a good day, they'll, they'll him and Han, you know, it'll be forever. Okay. Um, but if you box them in, you're giving them a binary choice. Is it Tuesday or Thursday? The answer is it ain't any of them. Right. Is Tuesday <laughs> afternoon or Thursday morning better for you? Oh, Thursday morning. Is early or mid-morning better for you? You know, you're, you're boxing them in. I got it. And, um, you know, the, the process of selling is not just showing up to sell something. It, 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 it is understanding what they want and what they need and figuring out how to sell it, figuring out how to deliver it. Sometimes I'm not the right solution. And, I, and I've actually told people that. Right. I've had job interviews where I've said, I, I don't think this is the right fit for me. Can't be, can't be everything to everybody, right? But you can be honest and that relationship will continue. They will remember that. They will remember that. Well, that's great, Rusty. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. It's very interesting, very informative. I hope you have a wonderful evening. Hope you're feeling well. It's good to say, be safe, you and your family. Great, yeah. I have some materials. If anybody's interested, um, contact me. I'll be happy to provide. That's great.